the Rangers stay alive and force a game seven. So there will be a final deciding game at the Prudential Center Monday night as the Rangers win it 5-2 at Madison Square Garden. Honestly, it didn't really look good very early. The Devils took a 1-0 lead. I thought the Rangers' first period was not very good, but they were able to tie it up by the end of it on a power play goal by Chris Kreider. And that was really the line that really led them in this game. Um, Obviously, that was a power play goal, but Kreider, Zibanejad, Tarasenko, uh, which was put together. We've seen them together, you know, earlier on. That was a unit, but Gallant did some line switching and... And I guess it worked. Um, You know, a change had to be made. And we'll see. Like, I don't necessarily see these lines. Like, let's say the Rangers somehow get by New Jersey uh, in Game 7. I I don't necessarily see these lines as ones that you'll see in the long run. But they kept the fourth line intact. And the fourth line, again, I'm not a big fan of the fourth line. I'm really not. But they did get a goal in the third period. So that was good. But... Like I said, you had Zibanejad centering Kreider and Tarasenko. Then you also had... So the kid line was broken up. It's Heedle centering Panarin and Kako. And then Trocek centering Lafreniere and Kane. As far as like players that stepped up tonight that hadn't... Mika Zibanejad, it was just great to see him score. Zibanejad gave the Rangers the lead and, and they didn't look back from there. Rangers really played a very good second period. But Mika, you know, that was good to see. And I'm hoping like last year against Pittsburgh, where once he gets going, he takes off. And so I knew his advantage, and you knew he had it in him. You knew it. And that was great to see. Uh, and, and for Kreider, um, you know, just such a force in front of the net on the power play. But for, but for Kreider as well, had a great pass on that advantage had goal. And also had a nice one on a Tarasenko goal. So Tarasenko gets back into the scoring act. You know, when Tarasenko has scored in the series, the Rangers are 3-0. and up. And, it's had, and all three goals were pretty big. So, you know, it's nice to see him getting an opportunity. And what was great as well, the Ranger power play went one for four. They had four early-ish power plays, a couple in the first, a couple in the second. And Tyra Sinko was on the first unit over Patrick Kane, which is the right move. Now, did it make a huge difference? No, probably not. But I'm just happy that that's the case. And, you know, as far as struggles, for me, I mean, Artemi Panarin, it's still, it's just still not there. And I guess the hope here for Panarin is that, like last year against Pittsburgh, where he does, where he finally comes through in Game Seven in overtime on that power play goal, maybe it's something like that where Panarin he doesn't do much, but in the biggest, biggest spot he does something big. That's that's kind of what I'm hoping for because again with our time Panarin, wherever this goes, he is not someone that I feel confident in the playoffs. Uh, I don't want to make this too negative, right? I mean, this was a big win, but 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 for Panarin. I, uh, I'm i not, like, this isn't surprising that Sabanajad would be the one to break through and then Panarin still doesn't. Just talking about those two. Uh, for Patrick Kane, he did draw a key penalty that led to the Ranger power play goal, so I'll give him that. However, um, you know, with Kane, like, I, I just, I'm just not confident in Patrick Kane. So, you know, those to me were still two negatives. Uh, again, look, Kane... To be fair, like, there were some good moments. Like I said, he did draw that penalty, and he also did make a nice play. I want to say that might have led to the Tarasenko goal, actually, where he had a nice forecheck that caused a turnover. He left, and then Tarasenko came on. I think that might have been the same shift. So Kane had some moments, don't get me wrong, but overall just a better effort by the Rangers. And the defensive pairs were a lot different, too. For a while, I mean, for a while in this game, things were switched up. Uh, you saw Mikolo with Truba. You saw Miller with Schneider. There were different things going on for for sure. And that third pair did not play quite as much. Mikolo Schneider didn't. And you know what? In, especially in Schneider's case, and Braden Schneider gets his first uh, NHL playoff goal in this one. Um, Braden Schneider with less ice time and less responsibility is a lot better. I thought Braden Schneider had a good night. And, you know, sometimes these times on ices aren't quite accurate, but it says 13 minutes for Schneider. It didn't feel, looking at these ice times, it didn't feel that way. It felt more even, but yeah, Mikola played like 12, 14 and Schneider 13. If that is the case, to me, draw that up to like, I think that's the way to kind of go. Um, You know, we kind of saw it last year where in the big games, you probably want to just lean on that top four. And I still think that Keandre Miller needs to do better. Uh, I, I still, 
you know, there's still more to give there for Keandre Miller. I think it's been a disappointing series for him. I thought the Lingren Fox pair was good tonight. Adam Fox getting a couple of assists, getting a little bit more involved in the offense. Nothing overly so, but, you know, I, again, I thought that that pair was pretty solid. And, you know, that those are my thoughts on the defense. But the eventually, Akira Schmidt gets pulled late in the third. Now, that is a debate as far as who the goalie will be in Game 7. Will it be Schmidt or will it be Vanacek? Ruff didn't commit to it. If I'm the Devils, I got to think it's still Schmidt. Like, if I'm a Ranger fan, look, clearly, as we've said, you can get to Akira Schmidt. Um, but if I'm a Ranger fan, I, I personally would prefer, I'd still prefer Vanacek. If I'm the Devils, I'm still going with Akira Schmidt. Um, and so I know there's a debate there. I'd still be surprised if they switched back to Vanacek. But that's a storyline that we will still find out about. But for the Devils, there's been a lot of struggles there from production. You know, we talk about the Rangers, but let's think about New Jersey for a second. If you're a Devil fan, look, you're upset with Timo Meyer. You're, look, you're, you're probably pretty upset with Nico Heischer. Um, Jesper Bratt, right? Like, you're not getting a ton of production from, you know, of course, Jack Hughes. I don't think you can complain about him if you're a Devil fan. And, and you're getting, you know, some contributions from, you know, guys like Eric Howla and Dawson Mercer. And players like that. But, you know, again, I think if you're a Devil fan, like, you're looking for some more production from some of your bigger name guys as well. It's going to be a very interesting Game 7. That's all I have to say. Um, and it's interesting. And we'll get into Game 6. But for Game 7, I said all along that I didn't think that home ice in this series was that important. That's proven to be right. Now, but Game 7 can be a different story. Now, from a Rangers standpoint... Last year, they won Game 7 at home versus Pittsburgh, and they also won Game 7 on the road at Carolina. So you hope that that experience serves them well. And I'll say this. The Rangers cannot have the first period they had uh, tonight. And I feel like dating back to the regular season, well, I guess that's not totally consistent. But it just feels like the, the first periods have been better for the, for the Devils. Although, as I think about it, it's, it's, been var it's varied a bit. But... Let's just talk about tonight. Like, the Rangers cannot get up to that start in New Jersey. Um, and, it's, and it's funny. I thought the first goal of this game would be big. The Devils scored the first goal of this game, right? And, and still the Rangers came back and won. So you just want to get off to a good start. You want to quiet that crowd in New Jersey. And, and, and hopefully, you know, my overall thoughts about home ice not being that important. Look, as I say it, I, I'm nervous. I mean, you know, that the, the Devil crowd will be loud. But I still vote the Rangers are more than capable of going to New Jersey and winning a game uh, and it being Game 7. And the fact that I haven't brought this guy up yet, Igor Shosturkin has just been so consistent and good all series long. He is so locked in and playing his best hockey of the season. Uh, you know, there were struggles during the regular season, but really, what was it, the last month, give or take, into the playoffs, he's been so damn solid, so steady. And, and, and you're leaning on that. Look, and you're going to have to. Uh, you know, that Igor will kind of get, you know, get these guys over the hump and pass New Jersey. So as far as this game was concerned, Rangers really get off to a slow start. But the power plays worked to their favor in the first. Against the flow of the play at 5-10, Nathan Bastion interferes with Barkley Goodrow, but the power play is unsuccessful. And that was kind of just a continuation of poor play. Then at 11.49, it's fourth line versus fourth line, and the devil fourth line scores. Curtis Lazar scores his first in the series from Ball and Severson. Uh, just an easy goal. Lazar with a rebound in front. Nothing Shesterkin could do about it. And at this point, I'm thinking, fuck this fourth line. Now, they do score later, but it's just, it, 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 they have not been getting it done. And you know what I'm thinking? There's a lack of speed on that fourth line. You know, Goody as a center, it, like, and, and look, he, he's been a center more than not in his career. You think back to his San Jose Shark days, Barkley Goodrow was a center. But on Tampa, that line with Coleman and Gord, Goodrow was a wing. I think that's part of it. But yeah, the speed on that line is not quite... I mean, Mott's got some quick bursts. But Jimmy Beasy's not necessarily the fastest. So I, I'm just trying to think, why is that line not really... A, it should be more effective than it is, but it hasn't been. And the Devils take a one nothing lead right there. Then the Rangers later on get another power play. At 1906, again, kind of against the flow of play, the Devils were really controlling this game in the first period. But Dawson Mercer trips Patrick Kane. Now, at first, I thought this was the wrong call. Where Kane gets, where Mercer gets the puck 
and then takes Kane down. But apparently that's a new rule from the last five years or so that if you still get taken down after the puck is, uh, you know, is poked away, that's still a penalty. So it was the correct call, and the Rangers score on it before the period ends. A huge goal. At 1935 of the first, it's Chris Kreider again. Kreider's sixth of the series, his fifth um, his fifth goal on the power play from Zibanejad and Fox. So it was a Mika Zibanejad slap shot that was probably going to go wide, but goes off Kreider's leg and in. A huge goal, and Kreider has all these records. It's crazy. I think he tied Mark Messier in NHL history for most goals in elimination games with 16. So hopefully, hopefully next game he can surpass that. But there's just, I mean, Chris Kreider, what he's done in terms of the, rec- the Ranger record books and just in general. He's really come up with some really big goals in his career. And this was a really, really big one to tie it up. And the Rangers actually started the second with the power play. As at the end of the first, Andre Palat trips Jacob Truba. And, um, but unfortunately, the Ranger power play unsuccessful. And then they get another one. As Andre Palat takes a second penalty, he slashes Ke'Andre Miller. Rangers don't score there either. So the power play, they get the one goal, but only one for four. So, you know, didn't love that. But again, you know, it's still very important. Just to get that one power play goal alone was very key. And like in game seven, you're going to need that again. Even if it's just one, that I think is going to be, again, if you come away without a power play goal, I'm having a hard time believing you're winning that game. So eventually the Rangers do take the lead. And it's Mika Zibanejad's first goal of the series. Much needed assisted by Kreider and Tarasenko. A really nice play all around where this play started in the Ranger defensive zone. They, they get out. Tarasenko with some nice pressure. And you know, that's again, it's an underrated part of his game that, you know, he is, you know, it's more than just his good shot. And But really, Kreider deserves a lot of the credit where Kreider's behind the net. And Kreider's not known for it as being a good passer. But Sabanajek kind of finds some space. The Devils lose him. But Kreider kind of with eyes in the back of his head with a backhand pass to Sabanajad. And Sabanajad just risks it a uh, top shelf against Schmid to give the Rangers a two one lead. Again, they, that was it just the fact that he got that goal felt specifically big for this team. And so the Rangers take a two one lead right there. Then the Rangers up uh, is a penalty. And, and, you know, the Rangers at this point were really uh, almost made it three one. They called Trocek for roughing Timo Meyer at 10 58. Didn't love the call. Honestly, I would have needed, I didn't really check the replays, but it, I mean, watching it live, it didn't feel like that should have happened. But if the Rangers penalty kill does a good job, and they, you know, they kill the penalty off. It's still 2-1. Then a big, big goal for the Rangers. Another late period goal. And it's Vlad Tarasenko scoring his third goal uh, of the series from Kreider and Fox. So Chris Kreider with three points, a goal and two primary assists. Give Adam Fox a couple of assists as well. And the Rangers take a 3-1 lead right there. And, you know, that line really was big, especially in the second period. They produced the two even strength goals. Uh, and you know, definitely keep them together. And that's going to be a line that you're going to have to depend on. And so Kreider, Zibanejad, Tarasenko come through and give the Rangers a 3-1 lead. And that felt good. To have that two-goal cushion going into the third is nice. There is an early penalty on the Rangers in the third. At 108, Zibanejad trip, trips Jack Hughes, but Igor Shosturkin and company does a nice job and they kill off the penalty. And then the Rangers start to get some momentum. And the fourth line gets a goal. It's Barkley Goodrow scoring his first goal of the series, and I believe his first Ranger playoff goal. I don't believe he scored a goal in last year's uh, 2022 playoffs. Assisted by Jimmy Vesey. So this is a two-on-one. Vesey takes a shot. Schmidt kind of does a poor job and allows uh, Goodrow to kind of come in and bat it in. Uh, And sort of an ugly goal, but hey, fourth line, they're going to score ugly goals, and it's good to see. The Rangers take a 4-1 lead right there. And then they score again. At 12:28, it's Braden Schneider's first uh, playoff goal, and it's assisted by Mikula and and Hedl. A nice shot by Schneider from the point, and it deflected, I believe, off of Myers' stick up top, and it kind of fooled Schmid, and it gives the Rangers a 5-1 lead, and then they take Schmid out. Schmid is, is pulled from the game. Interesting move by Lindy Ruff. Um, and, and at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I guess 5-1 is the magic, num- uh, is the magic score. Because the Rangers won the first against 5-1. This, that would not be the final score in this one, though. As they call Truba at 14-29 se- at for roughing Nico Heischer. Kind of thought this wasn't the right call. Like, it seemed like a good, clean hit. But the Devils get a power play. And they do score on it as Dawson Mercer scores the second goal of the series from Heischer and Hughes. And it cuts the lead to 5-2. But the Rangers still win easily. You know, the Devils kind of once. 
once the Rangers took a 5-1 lead, the Devils kind of, you know, controlled play. But at that point, the Rangers were in, were in full control. And they win the game, 5-2. And now uh, we are headed to a Game 7. And that is, uh, it, it's going to be exciting. I mean, it, it's, it's the Ranger way. There's no other way, uh, there's no other way else to describe it. And we saw two of them last year. And now the Rangers, with this elimination win, um, they improved to six wins and seven tries. Of course, the one loss being against the, the Tampa Bay Lightning in elimination games. So when their backs are against the wall, they play their best hockey. And, you know, for New Jersey, this will be a little bit new. But I don't think that takes anything away from them. Like, the Devils, man, like, I guess this was destined for seven. And the only other, there's been... I believe there's been two previous seven-game series between the Rangers and the Devils. The Rangers won both of them. I believe the first one was in 1992, and of course the second one, famously, in 1994, where Stefan Matteau gets the game-winning goal in overtime in the conference final. But I believe this is this will be the third game seven between these two clubs, and the first one that New Jersey will be the home team. Uh, completely different set of circumstances, but whatever happens here will be a very memorable moment within this rivalry. And it almost feels like, again, I'm waiting. I feel like this could go overtime, Game 7. Um, but this, you know, heroes are made, legends are made on either side. And, you know, of course, you think about Adam Henrique with his game. It was Game 6, but it was the conference final in 2012. And I'm sure for Devil fans, they view that very fondly. Of course, not for Ranger fans. But it'll be very exciting to see what happens. I'm glad the Rangers were able to respond in this one. Uh, and, you know, please, if you enjoy this, you know, please subscribe below. It would be much appreciated. And again, I am very much looking forward to Monday night. Rangers-Devils Game 7. The winner will take on the Carolina Hurricanes.